This process we're using is called stereolithography and uh, works by having a bath of uh, photopolymer that's, uh, that you shine a laser onto it and wherever the laser goes it solidifies a thin layer of, of that and you repeat that process over and over and so it's known for very high resolution, very high accuracy. Max, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Max, uh, I take it you are the founder of uh, Form Labs. One of the co-founders. Yeah. One of the co-founders. How is everything going with you guys? Great. We are, uh, you know, basically finished development of the Form One, and we are uh, just about to start shipping. So it's a very exciting time for us. Did, uh, did I hear it correct that uh, you guys uh, got Kickstarted, or? Yeah. So we uh, launched our product on Kickstarter about six months ago now, and so we took pre-orders for our product. We had a really successful Kickstarter run. We sold. Uh, over a thousand machines mm -hmm. and we're actually the largest Kickstarter project in the technology category ever so wow that's that's really exciting news now you guys are, are from Massachusetts right yeah. and Cambridge Cambridge Massachusetts and you you were studying like what's the history behind like how did how did it all you know come into play sure so me and the other two co-founders David Crater and Natan Linder actually we we're all students at the MIT media lab which is a, a graduate program that works in new media and new technology and um, we uh, we actually at Media Lab we have this amazing shop with all kinds of 3D printers and other tools. You can really make almost anything there in the lab. Yeah, right. and uh, so we had access to that. It's, it's really amazing capabilities. And as we were graduating, we realized that uh, we we're basically going to be thrown on the street without a decent 3D printer. And the professional quality 3D printers cost tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and we thought that's lame, that people should be able to have access to this. And we, we looked at you know, how those printers work and um, you know, figured out that we can do, do it better and cheaper and, and make it easier to use. And so that's, that's what we did. I see. Maxim, uh, there, there's quite a few players out there, right? And they have their own approaches as far as getting the models out, you know, the objects printed and everything. You have a peculiarly refreshing you know, approach. Well, like, did you actually study this particular technology at school, and and that's how you got uh, into this in terms of like this is where you put your your muscle work yeah. into work, or or did you actually outsource you know the the idea in terms of like finding uh, engineers to do this? Well, so um, so I'd been working with 3D printers for several years, and now I guess it's probably been six years or something like that, and. Um, and I'd seen all you know all the different types, and I'd worked on um, making other low-cost 3D printers, and it, and I you know I went through and looked at the different processes that had been developed, and figured out which ones we can do and we can do in a new way that's cheaper and more accessible, mm -hmm. and we and we came you know figured out that this this type of stereolithography, this specific type, we're is that what it's called? Stereo. Yeah, so that, this process we're using is called stereolithography and uh, works by having a bath of uh, photopolymer that's, uh, that you shine a laser onto it and wherever the laser goes it solidifies a thin layer of, of that and you repeat that process over and over and so it's known for very high resolution, very high accuracy. Mm. And what's the uh, resolution wise, what's the micron that you're so, talking about? So you're probably asking about the layer thickness, which we yeah. can do down to 25 microns. But actually layer thickness is not the most important thing. The most important thing is how fine features you can do, like the smallest walls and things like that. And we can do some features down to 0.3 millimeters, which is very fine. Now, speaking of size of the machine, which is this particular one, how do you call it? The Form 1. Form 1. Uh, how big can you print something like, you know, what object, uh, how big of an object can you print? So the, the build volume is roughly the dimensions of this square all the way down to, to the tank. So it's 125 by 125 by 165 milli millimeters. millimeters. Uh, in terms yeah. of inches, how many? About 5 by 5 by 6.5. Uh, do you have any projections as far as bigger model? Um, we Are you working on that? I'm pretty sure there's something cooking in the lab. We're certainly working on, you know, more than more than what you can see here, and uh, you know, we're excited about expanding the capabilities. Um, but even before our new machines, we can actually do a lot to improve the functionality of the machines we've already shipped by releasing new materials, better software, and so we're going to be doing a, a lot of that and make sure our customers get the most that they can out of this machine. In your hand, I see you have uh, something. What do you call this thing? Uh, the, the gyro cube is um, actually a design uh, from uh, 
some another user on the internet, uh, Ver Vertox, I think was his name, and uh, we you know we redesigned it, made the form labs. Cube. And so this was one of our gifts on Kickstarter, our one, one of the rewards for smaller backers was uh, we'll, we'll be sending them Gyrocube. So. And I see, I see you have uh, a particular color. Is this something to do with the laser prevention of like getting into the eye or yeah, whatever, actually, or is it, uh, or is it just the uh, aesthetic? It keeps the laser in and it keeps light that might cure the resin out. So it's both a barrier both ways. But actually, it's become a really distinctive visual element, even though we, you know, chose it for functional reasons. Right. And you, I, you, you really, really nailed in terms of design. You know, not a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, 3D printing, home 3D, 3D printing manufacturers uh, look at the design as, as the first priority in, in the sense where it not only functions but it also looks pleasing. And uh, what's your take on that? What can you tell about that? Compared to the, you know, the comp competition. Yeah. So we we made design a priority from the beginning. You know, we we're very we we're design focused company. We had an industrial designer involved from the very beginning, Guy Joav Reches, who did an amazing job. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, actually, he's in house uh, yeah, designer. Yeah. And so we were working really hand in hand, design and engineers together from the beginning, even before the technology was really, uh, you know, done. And it takes that kind of priority, putting priority on it, that to, to get the kind of results we want. And it takes amazing people like you are. And so that's, I think that's how we did it. I see. Now, um, in terms of uh, the, uh, the material, you know, talk about the material uh, for a little. Sure. So the um, materials, custom material we made. So the, the whole system is custom from um, uh, material machine and software. And the materials are uh, a type of uh, material called acrylate photopolymer. So it's kind of ac acrylic that cures when exposed. Is it liquid? Light. Yeah, it comes as a liquid. Uh -huh. And um, so what's the process? Can you like uh, basically show me like how? So there's a tank yeah, yeah, of liquid. Yeah, yeah. And you can see yeah. it's filled up. And every once in a while, the laser flashes, and wherever the laser goes, solidifies. Is it actually printing something right yeah, now? Yeah, it's printing right now. It's like an SLA. It is an SLA. Uh -huh. and, so, uh, so anytime the, the laser touches that liquid, it solidifies it. Yeah, just in a thin layer right where the laser goes. I see. So like, what's the final effect? I mean, does it does it have some kind of support, uh, supporters or something like that? that yeah, keeps so if it? you look, Let's the say part is on, on these pillars that are support the part as it comes out, then you break them off afterwards. Oh, I see. So intricate uh, details like a tree like that could be achieved, right? Yeah. I see. So is there is there is there a competitor even in uh, in the home uh, field in terms of achieving the 25 micron uh, resolution well, so, so out there? Two two problems I have with your question. One, it's not a home product. It's it's, it's not product. a home. No. It's uh, we call it prosumer 3D I'm, printing. I'm saying, right, right. It's prosumer. But it's not it's not meant for mass market end users. We don't expect your grandma to buy one and open it up right, in, right, in her right. home unless you're going to want to become the next Epson or, or Canon. Well, maybe we do, but we don't think it's possible to make a desktop 3D printer today. So what we're focused on is taking this technology and bringing it to everybody involved in 3D design, which is a lot of people. It's not just people, right. you know, designing products. It's architects, people doing jewelry. There's uh, there's really uh, a huge amount of people. Doing some type of 3D design, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and the other the other thing is, um, you know, the layer thickness is important, but actually, it's, what's more important is how the fine features you can do. So, like the the fact that the laser point is very small, and you can make very detailed fine structures is actually more important. So, when we print at 100 microns, which you can do on some FDM machines, it looks a lot better than than it does on an FDM machine. So I see. Now, you, I've, I saw that object, uh, object, you know, object about uh, object, you know the yeah. stratasys, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, do you compete with them in terms of resolution? Uh, for some types of parts and applications, we can actually do you know do similar parts. They right now they have a wider range of materials, but we actually you know given it's a smaller build volume, we actually can actually do parts that look quite similar to object parts. I see. So your your device is basically for prototyping, not quite using it for 
something like say you know there's something some, broke in the coffee some, maker there's some end use applications that that we think it definitely works for so for example um, jigs and and tooling for manufacturing like one-off parts like that uh, you know I, we do think it would be you know useful in end use case but um, you know there's some material limitations as far as the materials and things like that so the time it took you to produce this machine right what do you project as far as bigger machines, say, I don't know, two years, three years, four years, five, ten years, how many do you think? So people ask me a lot about, um, a lot about, uh, you know, what's going to happen in the future 3D printing. Honestly, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it because uh, as a famous person said uh, that the best way to predict the future is to invent it's To invent it, yeah. yeah so true. that's what we're busy doing and, you know, I can't tell you what we're working on next, but that's the future.